guys, it's Danny. As per your votes, today we shall do an update on the Repot Me Orchid Media that I tried I think a couple of months ago or three months ago, anyway, in the past few months. Time to see how the orchids reacted to it, my thoughts on it thus far. So we're not going to talk about all of the products that I have been sent from them and that I tried, but only the medium. But first of all, if you missed the videos in which I tried these media for the first time, I'll link them all down below in the description. We're pretty much going to focus on the Oncidium Repotme mix and also the Fragmipedium and Paphiopedium petalum mix which can be used of course with other orchids as well both of these media can be suited for multiple orchids and you will see that i did use multiple orchids with that said let's start i think with the oncidium medium Alrighty, so these are part of the orchids that i used this medium with the medium is the imperial blend oncidium imperial orchid mix to be more exact and i got a tiny bag of this to try out and i used it pretty much in two ways first of all as a standalone medium and the orchid we filmed the last time was the hoiara lava burst which gave me so much headache with Leka. This is the type of orchid which refused continuously for two years to adapt to Leka. And some of you wondered, well, how is she still alive and still okay if she refused to adapt to Leka? Well, it's not that it lost all of the roots all at once. The roots tried to grow. They grew actually for a few centimeters. They started to hydrate the orchid and then they just died off. Either they desiccated, not to mention they didn't branch out and so on and so forth. I never had a good system on this orchid i always had five centimeters max of five roots pretty much that was it so i potted it in moss initially and it did fantastic and then i thought you know what this medium being so fine and of course being destined for fine rooted oncidiums should work really really well with the hoiara i thought it will be the ultimate test for the medium because this is such a finicky orchid for me in this environment with her root system and as expected because yeah i was expecting it the root system really took off didn't skip a beat i didn't have any dead roots and it's just growing through the drainage holes that's okay that happens but it still continues to grow and develop and i don't have setback on the orchid or dehydration signs or anything of the sorts or leaf tip dieback pretty much everything is okay with the orchid now the thing is this medium is pretty fine it also has bits and pieces of turfus which retain more water than the bark it's supposed to last for longer than normal pine bark which you can find on the market this is pine bark as well it's just differently prepared it is buffered with a calcium solution to maintain its ph one thing i noticed with this medium and it's unlike the orchiara, which best grows cells in the bags. It doesn't have traces of that calcium. This is pretty clean. Of course, it does have a little bit of bark residue, a little bit of that fine brown dust, but not excessive, not like the other one. It does smell really nice when you open the bag. It does oops, <laughs> smell like the orchiara bark. It's just that it doesn't have those um, traces, that white dust that the other orchiara bark had. So that's one thing I observed. I didn't have to rinse this meat medium in any way and I'm very very happy with it now like any bark medium this will not act like sphagnum moss so I cannot do self-watering with this medium it simply doesn't wick up bark is not supposed to do that bark is supposed to be a much more airy medium than that so even if it has surface even if it's a smaller grade bark it's not going to work on its own with self-watering I think you noticed in my pot and you'll notice on the other pots at the bottom it's always a little bit more wet than at the top the size the slits all of these things make layering minimal in comparison to other mixes however it's still there so self-watering does not work with this medium i am using it with proper pots with drainage holes small grade medium can be used with bigger orchids but i think it depends a lot on the orchid itself on the environment on your experience level of course to spot problems in time if you have so i personally opted to go for tinier pots and tiny orchids which have fine roots so another orchid i potted in this medium is the trichopilia suavis which again i had issues with in leka you can see i have serious dieback on this one i didn't cut it yet i should but i wanted to show you guys so i 
I potted it in this medium, I had issues with non-maturing growths as well. Do you see this? This is a growth that will not mature from now, but it did put on some roots, so that's good. I think it can produce new growth. So I potted it directly into this medium, no moss, no nothing. I have a maturing growth here, but most importantly, I have new growth started and new roots going inside the medium. So it's so tiny. Oh yeah, there we go. Here we have a root and I've seen others. Here we have another root just traveling in the pot. I'm not sure if this is the one that I showed you earlier, but yeah, these two are definitely roots inside the pot. And on the surface, I do see roots traveling on the surface, going inside the medium. So that is very, very encouraging. So here we go, this is a root. I cannot see any burn tips or anything of the sorts. The roots seem to be pretty, pretty happy with this medium inside the pot and outside as I will show you with a different orchid. So again, overall, I'm pretty happy with this medium and the most recent orchid which I potted in this medium, just to give you an idea about the orchids that I wanna try with these medium is my Dendrobium cucumerinum. I don't have experience with this guy. He's a species, I don't know how he will do, I don't know how he will adapt to Leka, so I, I thought I should play it safe at least until we get to know each other. I potted him very, very recently in this medium. So again, you can see it doesn't have as fine roots as the Trichopilia, but still they're not very thick and I think they still can do very well in this type of medium. In this pot, I did not extra ventilation hose because it's a very tiny pot. It dries out pretty fast in my environment. So overall, with using the medium as it is, I'm pretty, pretty happy considering the drawbacks, which I already told you, this medium is not very wicking. It is more even and a little bit more wicking than bigger pieces of bark, but that's pretty logical. And it is definitely prone to layering like all bark, but not as excessive as other mixtures. So this is one way in which I use this particular medium. There's another way though, because it is a fine mixture and it works as a top layer in my self-watering pots. So this is one of them. This is my uh, Mastavalia, which is doing fantastic in self-watering. I'm so happy. Inside the spot, I have moss medium and only on the top, I placed the bark just to avoid algae formation. And I can tell you that at the top, I can see quite a lot of roots forming going down in the medium. Um, Mastavalias have pretty, pretty sensitive roots and they had absolutely no issue with this medium as a top layer. They're just growing away in the pot without any type of issue. I chose this as a top layer because it is fine. So the roots can find their way through the bark. It is light, so the roots will not have issues just lifting it up if they need to. It's also airy, even though it is a top layer. There, yes, it's also airy. It's not like I'm putting a plastic bag on top of the pot. So the pot still breathes. Mastavalias love to be wet. They're actually terrestrial orchids. They're not epiphytic. At least some of them, if not most of them. I don't have that much experience with Mastavalias, but the ones that I researched, they were terrestrials. So it makes sense that they would like sphagnum moss. And also another orchid which is not terrestrial but does enjoy sphagnum moss a lot is the Bulbophyllum. And here I have my daisy chain, which I potted again in a sphagnum moss medium with a top layer of bark. And here I can show you quite a few more roots just growing on the bark in between the pieces and having no issues at all. No issue with burning of the root tips or anything of the sorts. The bark is absolutely okay, absolutely fine. So overall, I am very, very happy with this bark considering in my environment, it's not an ideal medium because of the layering issues. So bottom line, I'm very happy with the evolution of my orchids. I think it's a great medium in the end and I will continue to use it with all of these orchids and with self-watering as a top layer. It is absolutely fabulous. It will definitely last longer than the sphagnum moss. So I can actually reuse it as a top layer with the very same orchid when I change the sphagnum moss. But that will be for a future video. Of course, the test of time will have to be decided in a few years, probably. But I'm committed to keeping these orchids in this medium for a few years. Alrighty, so this has been the Oncidium medium. Let's see the slipper medium. Next up, we have the Paphiopetalum and Phragmipedium Imperial Mix. This is quite a large bag that I received, so obviously I potted more orchids, so I have more to show you with this medium. Hopefully this video is not very long, but knowing myself, it is already 
too long. Anyway, so this medium is created to cater for slipper orchids, obviously, but it doesn't mean it cannot be used with other orchids as well because it doesn't have added calcium or anything that would only apply to Paphiopetalum orchids. In my mixtures, I did add some calcium supplements from Repot Me that I actually received from one of my viewers. If you watch that video, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I tried those things as well, but the medium itself doesn't have added calcium. So I can use it with other orchids as well, but let's first just take a look at the slipper orchids because they are actually the ones who are meant to benefit from this potting medium. So first of all, my uh, Vinicolor Paphiopetalum, one of the most stressed orchids that I have, He's old in my collection and he's been through a lot. I didn't even check the roots, so let's see. And we do have, do you see this? This is a root tip. This orchid has always, always had troubles with growing roots. Also, it has always had trouble with uh, nutrient absorption for this matter, but things have picked up lately, so that's good. Do I have something else? Not entirely sure. With these orchids, I also tried the slotted pots and I tried the various colors, which I find pretty fun, but uh, you cannot see all that well through them when it comes to roots. Alrighty, next up, another very stressed orchid. This is the Vipani, which has also bloomed and I almost destroyed the flowers. It's okay. So this one I actually did check. I didn't actually see many root tips, but I did see quite a few roots. It hasn't been enough, to be fully honest. I potted him a month and a half ago, maybe. This guy was not scheduled for repotting until the flowers were over, but I dropped him on the floor, <laughs> so yeah. It's okay, he should actually start uh, active growth pretty soon. And I also potted a green leaf Paphiopetalum, which was in Lekka, and I'm not happy. You can see I have leaf tip dieback, but nothing since. So with this guy, I can actually see a lot of roots through the pot and I can actually see root tips as well. So everything looks okay with this orchid and this is a much more recent potting, if I can call it like that, maybe a month or under a month ago and the roots didn't skip a beat. And I'm just noticing I broke my nail. I don't know when I did this, oh gosh, I'm so bad with my nails. Next up, I potted a Sarcochylus orchid. If you know me, you know I had major issues with my previous Sarcochylus, so I just bought another one just to try it out, which is developing fantastic. I potted it in this medium because I thought she had something against Leka. I thought, let's not risk it again, but the truth is that particular individual might have had issues. In this medium though, the orchid is growing very nice. Look how thick that root tip is. I never had these types of roots on my previous Sarcochylus. So I'm hopeful. It is enjoying this medium. I also repotted here my Dendrobium harvianum because again I had the leaf tip dieback situation which stopped when I repotted it so again issues with the leka with the dryness and let's just take a look at the pot I need to water this orchid so okay we have at the bottom roots coming out of the pot again it is a pretty recent potting so I'm not expecting roots to take over there is a root just coming out of the pot and growing in the pot so this guy enjoys the medium as well and just so you have an idea of what other orchids I put in this medium. This is a terrestrial orchid which I recently purchased and recently potted. I don't see any roots just yet, but the orchid herself is actually doing great. She's not dehydrated. She did not skip a beat after repotting, so I suspect she will enjoy the medium. It's still just very, very early to tell. And lastly, here I have some Phragmopediums potted in this medium. I have these orchids for about a year and a half now. I'm not the expert with Phragmopediums, but I feel like I'm doing better and I got to know them finally. I had major, major issues in Leka with them, although Semi-Hydro as a setup is the most preferred setup for uh, these types of orchids, not in my environment. I cannot keep it even enough and these orchids hate to be dry. So I had major layering at the top we discussed about it like the oncidium orchids these guys were not happy i had a lot of leaf tip dieback which has stopped in the past six months or so 
so things are getting better but I need to maintain the medium more even and believe it or not this medium stays a lot a lot more even than the Leka and furthermore even if bark is dry it does not suck moisture it's not wicking Leka is more wicking than bark so as a result my fragment mediums are actually doing very very well now and yes they're supposed to stay wet don't worry about it I did see a root on this guy there we go so I don't think they had time to grow enough roots but there we go I see a root tip developing here um, so that's really encouraging let me just check the others as well because I didn't do it so far I actually found some roots coming through the bottom of the pot on the Ainsworthy this is one and there's another one in the back but it's hard to show you guys so yeah, they are actually actively growing roots. That's great. And visually as well, they do appear to be much, much happier in an organic setup than in the Leka Semi Hydro setup. This medium seems to be to their liking. I don't have leaf tip dye back anymore on the new growth. On the older growth, there's still some issues, but that's okay, that's old stuff. The new stuff looks promising, so I'm really, really happy about it. I think they do actually enjoy this medium. Again, you're gonna have some layering with this medium, but not a lot. These orchids like to stay in a tray of water anyway, as it is, so it's okay. The medium for these orchids is replaced a little bit more often than other orchids, obviously, because of their need to be in constant moisture, but still have aeration at the same time. So far, so good with this medium. As you can see overall, I'm pretty happy with all of this medium. So let's wrap up this video. Okay, so as a resume, the orchids really enjoyed this medium. They adapted very, very well. Of course, with any medium change and anything you use, you need to adapt your care regime as well. And there is no magic recipe to do this because we have different environments and different climates. As I was saying, bark is not the ideal medium for me. It is most preferred for some orchids, such as the Phragmipediums. I don't think I would put Phragmipediums in moss. It's too much, it's too dense, I believe. So bark is still the best option for Phragmipediums, but would I change all of my collection to bark? Absolutely not! It's not cost efficient, it will imply me watering very very often and staying on top of layering and so on and so forth, but as I was saying this doesn't really happen to everybody. So if you think bark mixtures are good for you and you can handle them and they don't give you headaches, I think these medias are really really good. So if you're interested do check the previous videos as well just so you have all of the information necessary to take your decision. I'm happy with them, but of course there are multiple things going into the decision. Check out the website, check out what they say about the product, the prices, all of those things. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully Repodme will be in Amazon Europe very, very, very soon. I'll keep you up to date with that as well. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Links below as always, and you know the drill. Like or dislike this video below. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As, and other fun orchid subjects. And if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on notifications for my channel, and hopefully the notifications will work. There were some issues lately. Anyway, also in the description, you'll find more details about my setup and environment. So with that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.